speaker, Nusifio Mapisa Ngakula, who you might remember uh, handed herself over to police at the Littleton police station earlier today. We're still waiting to see when court proceedings will finally get, get underway at the Pretoria Magistrates Court. That's where she's expected to make some kind of application for bail. The story, though, has been unfolding from a number of vantage points, including her home in Bruma. That's where we find our senior reporter, Criselda Lewis, who's been there for us since the early hours of this morning. Criselda joins us now live. And what a morning it's been, Criselda. I imagine the state of silence there is in stark contrast to the activity that took place just around 7 o'clock today. Oh, absolutely, Ayanda. In stark contrast to what we saw a little bit earlier on this morning with a bit of uh, activity. It's absolutely silent now outside uh, the home of the former speaker, Nosifiwe Mapisangakula, the former speaker of the National Assembly and now former member of parliament. So shortly before 8 a.m. this morning, well, the vehicle that uh, uh, transported her, uh, the former speaker of the National Assembly, Nosifiwe Mapisangakula, uh, that vehicle left her home, which is just right behind me. She was accompanied by two other vehicles. So the occupants of one of those uh, vehicles, a maroon SUV had entered uh, this home here behind me uh, at about 6 a.m. and uh, the two occupants in that vehicle were part of the team that moved with her from here to the Littleton uh, police station where my colleague Samkele Maseko was reporting from. So this of course ending speculation you know over the past couple of hours about today being the day that she would hand herself over to police. Facing corruption charges, uh, you know, Nosifiwa Mapisa Ngagula yesterday resigning, uh, as we have been reporting, as the National Assembly Speaker and Member of Parliament. So uh, she's facing, of course, just to remind the viewer, a Schedule 5 offence. And my colleague uh, Kelly Mapanga earlier spoken about this. Uh, uh, of course, the onus in, in this instance would be on her, uh, the former Speaker, to state reasons why she should be placed on bail. The NPA, of course, you would recall, indicating that it... Uh, was not opposing bail. So these allegations, you'd recall, or that she received bribes uh, from a company called uh, Umkombe Marine, the chief executive Nomba Sanzondwandrovu. So Umkombe Marine, uh, we understand, or allegedly was awarded contracts with a couple of hundred million when Nosif Vuyama Pisangakula allegedly was a defense minister. So uh, this home where she uh, left this morning to hand herself over uh, to authorities, you'd recall, is the very same house that was raided by law enforcement agencies just uh, uh, last month. So uh, essentially uh, now, what I'm sure you've heard from uh, my colleagues, uh, Samkele Maseko, as well as uh, uh, Kani Mapanga, uh, with all of this now unfolding, what we've also seen is uh, her husband, who was also, you'd rem remember, uh, the former Minister of uh, Security, I remember, yes, uh, uh, many years ago, uh, him also being at court as well. Uh, a lot of public commentary, you know, about the allegations that she's been facing and, uh, you know, how uh, while she should, uh, of course, these uh, uh, issues should be ventilated in a court of law. But we've, we've seen over the past couple of hours, uh, in particular last night, a lot of reaction uh, to what has been unfolding. Many of the political parties indicating these are serious allegations that she is facing. Uh, she should go before a court of law. We saw that statement that was released by Nosifio Mapisangakula in which she indicates that uh, by no means uh, uh, the fact that she's resigned, does that indicate that she's in any way guilty. In fact, she wants to focus on this particular case in which uh, she's expected to appear in court uh, for this morning and uh, basically to, to, to save the integrity of Parliament while these, uh, this probe uh, uh, continues um, into alleged uh, uh, corruption against her. So at this particular point, uh, not much taking place outside her home, but we're expecting a lot of that to pick up, uh, perhaps uh, depending on what unfolds inside uh, that courtroom. Uh, if indeed uh, she is granted bail, uh, the expectation, of course, would be that she would return back to this home where she has been. Uh, there'd been a lot of speculation about whether she'd, she would leave from our home this morning. But of course, certainly she did. We captured that this morning as she left uh, with the two gentlemen who had gone inside the house house so just shortly uh, after uh, five o'clock this morning and then had left with her with the other convoy of, ve of vehicles that were here but not much presence at all certainly even the neighbors around here everybody has kept indoors and gone about their business essentially.
Yeah, and that's exactly what I was going to ask you next, Criselda. You've been there for hours now, and typically if this was in any other part of the country, there would have been an incredible amount of interest from onlookers, but it seems the high walls there have been able to uh, seclude whatever has been taking place at the Speaker's home, the former Speaker, I should say. Um, has there been any kind of movement from neighbours who no. even just wanted to find out what's going on? Well, they seem to understand uh, what is going on. Perhaps I've watched it uh, on the news. Uh, in actual fact, uh, there were some neighbours who did come out uh, to uh, this area where we're standing uh, uh, over the past couple of hours. And they certainly seem to know uh, what is uh, taking place, or the allegations, uh, at least, uh, that are being levelled against uh, the former Speaker of the uh, National Assembly, but certainly not wanting to say anything about uh, you know, uh, what is taking place. Uh, others have driven out and gone about their business but driving into this particular area Ayanda uh, I wouldn't really say it's a gated community but there is a boom gate uh, that um, uh, you have to pass through as you come to uh, this particular area where I am standing but uh, certainly in this area it's, it's, it's business as usual uh, it's just about a stone's throw away from one of the main roads around this particular area but um, not much at all everybody has stayed inside uh, the neighbors that came out um, have not said anything they've not wanted to say anything uh, that they're going about their business certainly so but uh, uh, I, I can guarantee you from where they stand uh, you know they're obviously aware of, of, of the allegations uh, that have been made against their neighbor and I'm sure they'll be watching everything unfold as many other South Africans will be doing so on television absolutely specifically on the SABC news channel Chriselle Lewis, our senior reporter just outside the former speaker's home right. thanks very much indeed Let's continue with reaction to the big story now and bring in uh, our guest, retired Major General uh, Keith uh, Mwape is part of the ANC Veterans League, also, in fact, uh, was part of the Defence uh, Ministry, I, I believe, during the time when Nusifu Yamapisa Ngakula was at the helm of that department. Uh, the retired Major General joins us now via our video link. It's lovely to speak to you, sir. Thanks very much indeed for making time. I wonder if we can just begin by the momentousness of this development, right? It's not every day that we have a speaker resigning and less than 24 hours later handing herself over to police. Good morning, Ayanda. Can you hear me? Loud and clear, uh, Major General, go ahead. Ayanda? Okay, good morning. Uh, Ayanda, and good morning to your viewers. Um, a momentous moment indeed uh, for our former speaker. And uh, you'll appreciate that uh, what she's done um, uh, is regarded highly by us. That uh, the office of the speaker uh, is the custodian of the highest of standards of our ethos of the decorum of parliament and uh, the department of military veterans and defense is uh, in serious democracy uh, second to the presidency and she's occupied these two positions and for her to step aside is uh, indeed uh, welcome by us and uh, we are urging everybody else that she's leading from the front. Those who have been charged, those who have been mentioned by Zondo, those who know that by their behavior they have attracted um, negative uh, uh, attention from the public in general, charged or not charged, must look at themselves in the mirror and say, should I continue? So what uh, Tembi has done, uh, rather that is her MK name, uh, what Tembi Nosibiwe has done for us is a step in the right direction. And in no way are we saying she's guilty. We're looking forward to how the legal processes, law enforcement agencies are going to deal with this matter. Right. In her two-page resignation letter, she says she's stepping aside in order to protect the integrity of Parliament um, and the likes. And there's been all kinds of conversations about whether or not she succeeded in doing that, given how much time she's taken since the allegations were first made and when she ultimately resigned. Where do you stand on that? Yes, uh, uh, Ayanda. You can, uh, a person like me, I mean, I know her for years. 
Uh, I know her husband, Charles. I know on the other side, I know Nombasa. We've been together in so many ways in the defense industry. I know Dr. Noel Ndrovu, the husband. We've been in so many things together. So for the time that this thing has dragged, uh, we've been very anxious ourselves as to what direction must we take. And uh, for the fact that the law enforcement agencies took so long, just traumatized us. So on the one hand, we may say that she herself should have seen this coming and should have stepped aside before the pressures. But that's water under the bridge. The fact of the matter is that she's not only protecting the integrity of parliament, she's looking at the organization for which she's given all her life, and he, in her own personal capacity as well. She's an international figure. She's a national figure. She's a friend to many of us. So this step was obviously not easy for her, but she's taken it. Mm. You'll correct me if I'm wrong, Major General, but from where I'm sitting, it sounds almost like you've been able to enjoy somewhat of a personal relationship with the former speaker. If that's the case, do you know how she's doing? What her disposition to all of this might be? Well, look, we don't get into we don't get into those things. As you know, I was chief of the Army Reserve and uh, reporting to the National Chief of Defense, but I was also chairman of the Reserve Force Council advising her on how the reserve system in South Africa uh, works or has to work. So in that sense, you, you don't get into any other thing that the person may be engaged in. But it cannot be that we didn't hear, uh, we didn't observe. And uh, as you know, Jewel, I mean, Newell herself, Dr. Newell and Rovu was a deputy uh, to the Surgeon General, and he was uh, destined to the high office of being Surgeon General. And uh, just because of this whole thing, she had to, he had to be told to step aside himself. You see, he had to be suspended because he was on the, on the, on the procurement organization. In fact, Ayanda, we must begin looking at whether procurement in the defense force uh, must be must be by private companies uh, when, in fact, serious armies procure themselves. I mean, she had got a contract where she con uh, uh, delivers crime mission equipment to our operational areas. Those are heavy secrets about the type of weapons and about the places where we operate. And this cannot just be to the private sector just like yeah, and that's exactly where I was hoping to go next, right? In some ways, using this as a teachable moment about gaps in the system and ways through which they open themselves up to what allegedly took place. From your vantage point, how much of those gaps still exist? I mean, could we be back in this kind of situation in the next 10 years' time with the current minister? Quite likely. Quite likely. Because... The, the defense force is, is, is a secret institution. Uh, it, it reports uh, to parliament, yes, but it's got a direct line with the presidency. And uh, uh, even you've seen how in, in the portfolio committee, the media is there. We discuss the numbers of uh, aircraft that are not functional. We discuss the numbers of our personnel, how many are aged who are still in the system. I mean, all secret, serious democracies even, don't ever, ever put on the, on the public, just like that, everything that relates to the military. On the side of the veterans, we as the veterans report as well, because the president is the patron in chief of the veterans. The veterans have the, the Department of Military Veterans, whose problems as well uh, are, are, are so known to the extent that uh, we, we're just hanging everything that is dirty uh, on the open linen.
Yeah, I mean, there are reports uh, recently about soldiers apparently starving uh, in Sudan. But we digress. Yeah, you, you've already spoken to us, spoken to us a bigger pardon about um, your reaction as the Veterans League. Who can ever forget the scathing remarks by a former member of the ANC Veterans League, Mavusom Simang, when he called for some kind of accountability, if I put it loosely, within the ANC itself. And there's going to be real questions about the impact, perhaps even the dent this might have on the governing party in the lead up to the elections. How concerned are you as the Veterans League about that? Well, the speed, the speed with which uh, uh, Nazi viewers uh, processes have uh, unfolded over the last two weeks or so, uh, actually say to us, so right we are in supporting uh, Mavuso's statements which are in any case our statements. They are not just for him. He only created a little hiccup when he resigned. But other than that, we, have, we are fully behind the fact that the 90 plus lists that we have given over uh, to the, to the Secretary General's Office of the ANC must be complied with. Now the President of the ANC has said that fine, uh, some of them are on the list, and between now and May, law enforcement agencies will ensure that they work hard so that some of the names get withdrawn. We are saying, where is the timeline right now? Where are these law enforcement uh, agencies? The NPA, the, the SIU, uh, the SARPs themselves, etc. Why have they been dragging their feet? And we are definitely saying that we can't go to the elections with tainted names including those that may not have been mentioned by Zondo. And they know themselves, and some of us know them. So if we really want to be an ethical, much more than just an ethical ANC, ethical ruling party, we want to present an ethical society, a South Africa that everybody, especially in Africa, expected that it will lead by example. The very name that the ANC was about, the African National Congress, looked at as a continental movement for liberation and it must lead by example mm, very clear where you stand but do you feel heard in the organization especially given how important this election might be come again i was just trying to gauge especially given how important this election is going to be yes this election is very important we are at the crossroads we are at the crossroads and uh, I've been looking at the main of uh, the different uh, political parties, at least the main ones. They, they are literally saying the same things. They are talking about unemployment, inequality, and poverty. And um, they don't just differ with figures. The ANC might say relief is 450, Malema would say it's 5,000, and uh, Patricia Delil would say it's 1,000. They are saying the same thing. And one wonders whether, in fact, Mandela wasn't right when he said government of national unity. Even if you sweep the elections by 60%, bring the rest in so that we have a consensus-driven parliamentary system rather than a Westminster-style parliamentary system that makes everybody who is not ruling to be poking and poking and punching uh, holes into the ruling party. And, and at the end of the day, parliament becomes a circus. But with the government of national unity, you bring in everybody to say, let's contribute. What we are dealing with is not five-year terms by a ruling party. We're dealing with 400 years of colonialism, of neglect, of oppression, of exploitation. That cannot be dealt with by a minister in housing in just five years. Interesting. We know that um, the... Um the former speaker was going to retire in any case. I think she had already made that public um, even before the State of the Nation address was delivered by the current president. But there's naturally going to be all manner of conversations about her legacy, especially given what's taking place over the past 24, maybe even 48 hours. What do you reckon becomes of her legacy now? Well, uh, uh, Mr. Nyati, I'm an old man of 77 years. There's no retirement here. She might be retiring from parliament, yes, from a position, but she's going to bounce back. Even if she's uh, convicted and sentenced, 
right there in prison, as Mandela would say, she will establish a branch of the ANC. And when her term is finished, she'll bounce back and will welcome her. So retirement, yes, but there is a revolution here. There is a transformation here, not only in South Africa, in Southern Africa, Sade, in the whole Africa, there are wars going on that may trigger a third world war. So the intellect of all of us is needed. Yours as the media, very important, all of us. So she's retiring and we are going to look forward to supporting her as a person, uh, not in terms of the court, of course, the law must take its own course, but as a person and as a member of a political system and a country that needs to resolve all these problems, we shall be with her and we will come here. All right, retired Major General Keith uh, Mwapa, thanks very much indeed for speaking to us. Really do appreciate your take. Uh, the retired Major General is also a member of the NEC of the ANC's Veterans League.